Hello everyone and welcome back! Today I am back in Small Victories by Johanna Basford and we're going to continue on this little nature page. So today I want to go in and work on the little mushrooms down in the left hand corner. And I really, really want to make this like a vintage -y sort of feel to it. So we'll still be using our dough and drawing pencils. I won't put down the the numbers or the, the pencil names because it's only a set of 24. So you can just have, have them all out. There's a good chance we'll be using nearly all of them. So let's get started. For the top here, I'm just going to add in a few different colours and a bit later on I'll get my Sakura Jelly Roll white out and I'll just add a little bit of highlights and things on there. So it doesn't have to be super structured, just sort of put these colours wherever you sort of feel like it and it should look nice when we get the highlights in afterwards. So I'm just doing a bit of green, some browns, a bit of blues, and it should be good. So I want to do a lot of blue tones, cold tones in this, and maybe like a little pop of orange. So we'll see where we end up. But for now, I'm going to do this, uh, these little flowers in my blue tones, and then we'll be removing the white outlines afterwards. As you can see, I am sort of leaving a little bit of a white border just down the bottom of these petals. And it's no particular reason, it just gives a little bit of a highlight. And you can, if you haven't done this so far and you've gone all the way down, don't worry about it. You can just add in a little bit of extra Sakura Jelly Roll later on. And then if you want to color on top of it, you can a bit later.
I'm going to go in with my ink blue again and I'm going to add in a bit more shadows here. I'm trying to have my right hand side a little bit more shaded than the left. You don't have to do it that way but I have a tendency to have my light source come in slightly from the left so I tend to go more of a shadow on the right hand side and slightly more highlights on the left. I just like the way it shapes the flowers by having one side a bit more shaded than the other and it's just a personal preference really. You'll probably find out as you start colouring that you end up with sort of similar things. You'll probably end up with preferring to have your light sources come from a similar direction each time. I don't know if that depends on whether you're right-handed or left-handed or things like that. That would be interesting to find out just because I always seem to go for shading on the right and highlights to the left. So uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. So if you have a preference, pop it down. I'd love to see if we're all the same or if we're different. Do you always put the shadow in the right, in the same in the same spots? For the tops here, I'm just randomly putting down some little Sakura Jelly Roll dots and then I'm going to erase these black outlines. I'm not going in super heavy. As you can see, I am barely touching the paper. I usually like to use my 05 Sakura Jelly Roll but that one has unfortunately dried out. It was accidentally left with the cap off for a while. And uh, yes, I haven't gotten that working again and I just haven't gotten around to buying a new one. So I'm using my 08 at the moment and it's a little bit thicker. So I'm just trying to be a bit more careful now when I'm putting this sort of white area around. I don't want it too thick. That's again, it's personal preference. Some people like to completely cover the black outline with like a nice thick um, sort of line of white instead. And I've seen some amazing pictures that does that. So it's just down to personal preference. I just try to just sort of tone down the black a little bit, but without having that white super obvious.
So with these leaves, because they have that little bit more of a yellow undertone, I'm going to go in and add in my final shadows with this ink blue, just to sort of blue it up a little bit and make it sort of fit in with the rest that I've planned out for this picture. I really think that's one of the things I like a lot about the Derwent drawing pencils is because they only got 24 in the set you kind of get forced to blend your colors and mix the tones that you want so instead of just going in and grabbing a, a sort of blue toned green like in the polychromas I can go ahead and I can go and get my juniper green for example or the earth green I kind of have to layer it in with other colors in here to achieve the kind of tones and hues that I want. I've got my darkest shadow down there now so I'm going to go over with my light green, my pale cedar here and I'm just going to pull a little bit of that black out of there and just sort of bring it down a little bit. So this is, I had a question actually a couple of videos ago about sort of the difference between like burnishing and blending and this is more of a blending technique so I'm using a lighter pencil and I mentioned this in the, in the reply to that comment. And I'm using that color to pull out the other colors and sort of mush them together a little bit. Um, and while I'm at it, because the question was what's the difference between blending and burnishing. Um, burnishing is when you press down really hard. Once you've finished putting your pencils down and the layers that you want, you push down really hard with a pencil. It could be a blender, it could be a burnisher and you flatten the tooth of the paper. You can blend while at the same time not burnishing. But once you burnish, it's very hard to lay any more colors on top. So it's one of the reasons why I don't do that overly often. There are of course different ways to blend. I just showed you how to use a lighter color to blend out a little bit, but you can also blend by just layering lots and lots and lots and lots. Um, you can blend by using a blender pencil, you can blend by using a blender solution, sometimes you can get a blender solution in a blending pen. Um, I think Derwent got a blender pen, um, they also have some blender pencils. Um, if I'm using a pencil I do like to use the Caran Dash, I find that's one of the ones that gives the best result. They have a normal pencil and they also have a full blender. Um, and I find that they work really well to sort of smoosh the colors together and make them nice and bright because they do cover over the tooth. They help covering the tooth so it doesn't shine through the paper. So what I'm meaning with the tooth is that when you're layering down your pencil, you will see little bits of white that kind of shine through. So I'm just talking to those of you that haven't colored for a long time. Um, I'm sure a lot of you would know already what I'm talking about, but um, that those white bits that shine through your paper that you can see, those are what's called the tooth and it's like little bumps on the paper and it makes it easier for your pigment to stick to the paper. If it's completely flat and totally smooth, it's going to make it harder to layer in lots of colors on top of each other and get a really nice and rich color while if there's a bit of tooth to the paper you have something to work with you can lay lots of different colors on top blend them together and um, yeah it's it's sort of what makes coloring interesting really by be, being able to have that option to play around with your colors for a while 
and uh, obviously yeah then if you push all of those down yes you're gonna get a nice sort of smooth surface with no white shining through but you can't add anything else on top afterwards at least very limited things on top so I hope that makes sense So my plan with this mushroom is to do a bit of layering between some purples and red colors as well as my blue in there. I kind of want that sort of violety dark tones on the side here. I'm going to do like a little bit of an edge here. You can see I am using that dark color slightly further in on the paper there. So I'm leaving a bit of an edge. Um, I don't always do that but I thought I'd give it a go on this one so figure maybe there's a light source at the back there just a little bit and because it's round you might get that little bit of a shine just on the edges but um, yeah I want to make sure that we get a lot of those blue tones in even though at the moment it's looking kind of red but it won't when I'm finished with it I promise
I'm going to go in with the ivory black again and I'm gonna add in a bit of this for our little edges here make it really nice and dark so we get that shape to the mushroom and then I'm gonna add a little bit of this underneath each of the little white dots as well I'm only doing a little bit you can then blend it out with a bit of grey I don't want it super harsh but it's going to help bring those spots out a little bit later on when we add in some sakura jelly roll to the top of them Now looking at this on the screen, one of the things I'm noticing is that compared to the real life of this picture, this mushroom is looking, is appearing more reddish violet on the screen than what it does in real life. So what I want you to do is go over where we just had the black ivory um, on the sides and go over again with the uh, ink blue and just sort of blend it in slightly towards the center obviously not on top of where we have a yellow or the ochre colors but kind of where I'm going now with that purple you want to nearly go the way towards the highlight there just with a little bit more of that blue tone just to blow it up a little bit more because while it's looking real to me like more blue to me in person it's not coming across as blue on the camera so i just want to make sure that you yours turns out the way that i can see mine
Now make sure on the stem here that you get enough shadows in down the bottom and up the top. I'm going to go in with the uh, ivory black here and just sort of go in where it overlaps a little bit and because there are things here that could be shading it I would expect it to be darker and same up the top here with the cap of the mushrooms would be shading them a bit as well so make sure that you get that sort of dark shadow in and usually I don't go straight for my black but I think we need it on this one and I can always tone it down by blending it out a little bit because these are wax based as well so I can drag it out a little bit and work with it but it doesn't really matter if you have a little bit of a harsh um, shadow there I don't think it matters I think it's going to look quite nice anyway I'm just going to go in now with my wheat color and just do a bit of blending here. So I'm going to go over this little edge that I left bare and then I'll just sort of smush out a little bit here and up towards the center where my highlight is just to mix it all and make it nice and smooth. Just blending out a bit of that black that I had to put down before with a grey and I just noticed I've got a bit of a excess Sakura jelly roll here. Luckily with that one you can kind of scrape it off with your nail if you need to and then if you feel like you need to add some more you can but I'm just gonna try to soften that up again so it's not such a big blob up the top. For the stem of leaves there on the left hand side I want a blue undertone to it so I'm going to go in first with my blue and map out my dark areas. I'm not going in hard or anything like that. I still want to be able to layer in some colors first before I start blending them out and smushing them together. And um, But yeah if I get that blue down first I'll definitely get a nice blue undertone to it.
just to get my nice dark shadows in here I'm going to be layering in a little bit of ivory black with the ink blue so again I'm going in light with the black with that once you've added that down you can't really go too much lighter so just be careful you can what you can blend it a little bit because it's such a smooth oh not smooth a soft wax based pencil but at the same time you are better off going in slowly and rather adding a few extra layers if you need to it just gives you a little bit more control of over what you're doing and avoids any sort of mistakes or anything like that that you might want so I'm just trying to be careful here as I am bringing in these dark colors Now I forgot to show you my pencil here but it is the wheat color and I'm just using it to um, sort of I'm just going over a little bit of those white outlines that I did and I did forget to show you that I was blending it out as well I just completely forgot to press record as I started this but I've just used it to blend out a bit similar to what we did on the greener leaves further up so you can use it to do a bit of smushing you know technical terms and uh, it should work really nicely so for the flowers here I just wanted a little bit of a pop of that sort of orangey terracotta colors 
so I'm just gonna go in here and layer in with this sort of terracotta and then we're gonna go in I'm thinking with some of the um, yellow ochre and hopefully that will just be enough to just give it a little bit of a pop of warmth in there because the rest of it is pretty cool and cold colors For these warm tones, the chocolate brown is a really, really lovely color to shade with. So that is my first choice here. I'm kind of bringing it in here where I can see those little lines and where I can see any overlap as well. So mainly towards the center of the flower, along those lines and along the overlaps. I'm going to go in and layer some more terracotta on top where I just had that chocolate color just pulling it out a little bit further just to get a bit more movement in these little petals and um, then we'll go over it again with that yellow ochre and it should be really nice and of course I'll be erasing the black outlines with my sakura jelly roll as well
with the smaller mushroom um, I'm going to use similar colors but I want it slightly more blue than the one on top just because it's a little bit further down I feel like it might have a few more shadows just because it's underneath the other one so I'm going to go slightly darker blue and um, yeah just a little bit darker tones for this one Again here, same as with the top mushroom, go in a little bit bluer and slightly darker than what you think I am doing. It's paling a lot on camera when I'm videoing compared to when I take a still photo. So you'll see the difference in the end photo compared to, um, to the video. So just go in slightly darker, maybe just like another layer or so on top of this before you start adding in the other ones or you can just add a little bit of blue afterwards as well if you feel like you need it and as you can see my camera accidentally stopped recording there i had to run over my 30 minute recording time but you can see how far in i went and where i left my highlight with that color
I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more of the ivory black just to the top of this mushroom to start with just because I feel like it's got more of a shadow from the mushroom above and I just felt like it was slightly too highlighted up the top there to look sort of natural so I just added a little bit of that and then I'm just going to mix it out a little bit with that marsh violet and you can see it tones so tones down that black a little bit but it's still nice and dark like like it's got a bit of shadow come from that big mushroom there For the background I'm going to go in very very simple olive earth and some green tones down the bottom here. Um, I'll be layering in slightly darker um, whether it'll be the um, ivory black or uh, maybe one of the blue tones just sort of here where I'm at the moment. I'll have that as my darkest point sort of directly around where everything grows out from and then I'll go more blue the further up on this picture I come so not overly complicated and then I'll just go in with the wheat just around the edges of the whole thing just to blend it out into the background of the paper.
Now this Soloway Blue is, it's there, but it's hard to see on camera. It is a very pale colour, so I am sorry that it's probably not picking up overly well to show you. But just have a look at where I'm colouring and then if you're following along just do the same. So kind of just making a bit of a mock sort of oval circle here. Um, I'm not going to make it like super circular. It doesn't really matter. It's just like a rough shape. A bit like we did on the top right hand corner on the first picture if you followed along for that one. So I'm just bringing this up. I will go in with some more blues just to darken up the areas directly behind the mushroom just because I want it to be a bit darker there so that the highlights on the mushrooms and things and the leaves are going to pop a little bit more. I'm just going to add a bit of the ink blue again now just sort of behind here as I mentioned I want my darkest area of the background to be directly behind these mushrooms to make them the mushrooms look like they're in the foreground I want them to pop a little bit more and have like a good light source on them if you're finding that the um, the blue isn't enough you can go very very gently in with a bit of black I've said it before in other videos but we're all different when it comes to the pressure that we put down and just because mine is looking a certain way it doesn't mean that yours will look exactly that way either so you just look at what your picture needs and then you just add whatever you feel like you need to add it to make it the way you want it whether that is lighter or darker but at the same time just go in light when you're adding extra things it's better to have to do 
three or four layers then having gone in too harsh on the first layer and then not being able to take it away afterwards. Now I think we're pretty much ready. I did forget to press record when I did that um, layer of wheat um, color just around the very edges. So I just sort of went around where the top of the flowers are and everything. You can kind of see it here in the final photo that it's there um, just to sort of blend it out to work in with the actual color of the paper a little bit more and soften down the edges. But I am super happy with this sort of little vintage -y kind of picture. And I think it turned out really lovely. So I hope you had a good time following along. I can't wait to see you again next time. And we will be tackling the little fox. So it'll be a bit warmer that time. So thank you all for being here. And I'll see you again next time.